Today's study from the book of Obadiah will answer the question, how can I be a good winner, or at least, how can I not be a bad one? Have you felt like the people around you wanted you to fail just so that they could take advantage of you? Or have you felt like you wanted somebody to fail? Maybe because you didn't like them or maybe because they had hurt you. In today's Bible reading, we're going to read from the book of Obadiah. And there God reacts to the nation of Edom and how they reacted when Jerusalem fell and the people of the area were in despair. In 2019 NBA championships, Kevin Durant fell to the floor, hurting his Achilles. The people in the arena cheered when he fell to the floor because that meant that their team might actually win. The Toronto players immediately motioned to the crowd to stop, but the damage was done. The pundits were appalled by the cheering for the injured player. I would like to think that I'm better than that, but the truth is I'm a Sacramento fan and I've been known to cheer when there's a missed free throw or to chant air ball when the opposing player misses the basket completely. And I must admit, just about every time the Los Angeles Lakers lose a game, I'm happy. Now this may seem like a silly example, but this is attitude is the attitude that God was confronting in the book of Obadiah. So the book of Obadiah is one chapter in length, and it is about the nation of Edom and the descendants who are the descendants of Esau. Esau was a twin brother of Jacob, the patriarch of the nation of Israel. The people of Edom settled in the southeast area of the Dead Sea. The terrain of this area was natural caves and high ground that made them feel secure and above everybody else, both figuratively and arrogantly. So the book of Obadiah is a prophecy about a future destruction of the nation of Edom, and it talks about what God has against them. In chapter, in verse 3, it talks about the arrogance of superiority. In verse 11, it talks about Edom did nothing to help Israel in their time of despair. In verse 12, they gloated over the demise of Jerusalem. And in verses 13 and 14, they took advantage of Jerusalem's destruction and made themselves wealthy because of their demise. So, because of their bad behavior, their judgment, in verse 15, says, As you have done, it will be done to you. Your deeds will return upon your own head. It also says that the Israelites will repossess Jerusalem and all the lands around it including Edom. We like to think of ourselves as better than that. But let me ask you, when you win, do you do a celebration dance? Do you see yourself as better than another? How do you treat those who are less fortunate than you are or not as successful? Do you brag about your good fortune? Do you take advantage of those who didn't do as well as you did? It is natural for us to want to win, and it's common for us to want to see those who hurt us get theirs. We want the demise of our enemies, and we want to rejoice when we win. But God calls us to a different standard. Consider that the Lord Jesus Christ died on the cross while we were yet sinners to save us from our sins. While we were the enemy of God, he died for us. God didn't set, seek revenge but God desires the salvation of all people through his son, Jesus Christ. Even though the world hated him, he loved the world so much that he gave his one and only son. When Jesus came to the earth, he didn't seek to be superior. He humbled himself in the image and the likeness of man. Jesus came to heal the sick and call the poor and to love the unlovable, to set the captives free. He treated the least of these. Jesus put it this way in Luke 6, 27 and 28. Love your enemies. 
Do good to those who hate you. Bless those who curse you. And pray for those who mistreat you. The Bible teaches a different way to be a good winner. Romans 12, 14 to 21 says it best how we should respond to our enemies and to our friends for that matter. Rejoice with those who win, console those who lose. Don't repay evil for evil, but live at harmony and peace as much as it is up to us. And bless those who treat you badly. So the next time I'm at a Kings game, a Kings Laker game, I should buy a hot dog for a Lakers fan. Don't be proud or conceited when you win and associate with those who are not winning, who are in lower positions. Don't take revenge, let God handle it, but rather do good in the time of trouble. Your devotion for today, if you choose to do it, uh, will be one or two paths you can take. Uh, one would be if you know of somebody that is down that you probably are glad or would naturally be glad that they're suffering, but you know you can help, help them. But if you don't know of such a circumstance, what I suggest is making a list of those who have done you wrong, those who uh, you have every right to be mad at, and pray for those people today. That's what I would suggest you do. Uh, based upon what we've learned from Obadiah. The bottom line is, God calls us to a different standard. We are to leave judgment up to the Lord and not take advantage or to gloat. God is looking out for how we treat our friends and our enemies because that is the heart of God, is to love both. If we pray for our enemies and seek good for those who seek to harm us, then the then people will see the love of God through us. And if people can see the love of God through us, then perhaps they will come to know God for themselves. I hope you enjoyed this presentation of Obadiah. If you did, go ahead and hit the like button below. And if you would like more of these 10 minute presentations, then go ahead and hit the notification button and the subscribe button, and we will make sure you get those. Also, please take the time to let us know what you thought of the Bible study and perhaps how you're going to apply it in your daily life. Uh, our goal is to get through the entire Bible one chapter at a time for 10 minutes so that no matter where you're studying in the Bible, you'll be able to find something on that chapter. I look forward to you joining us next time for devotional Bible studies. This is Rick Pierce, and I'm praying that God will use you and bless you uh, for his glory.